Today's intraday action may be a little bit disconcerting for some. Is the leadership still intact, though, for the markets overall? Um, Dom, I think it's a good question because the market is extended and it's, it is a mature rally. We're going to be entering our 20th week next week. But I think we should be giving the stock market the benefit of the doubt. So today, stocks are wobbling. Not a surprise that there is some profit taking. We did actually have a good jobs number. So I'm, I'm probably saying one eyebrow is raised because we're selling off on good news. But with margin debt where it is, and I think the earnings backdrop being so strong and, and the Fed confirming that they're leaning towards cuts this year, I think the backdrop, is, as you noted earlier, is still very good for equities. What exactly is going to drive that? We, we've talked about this idea. It could be underlying earnings growth. It might be the idea of people paying more for that dollar of earnings expected, multiple expansions, so to speak. What's the big tailwind that you see coming up for the markets overall? Um, it's really all three. Um, you know, I think there is upside to earnings. Earnings beat by 7% in the first quarter. So you're already one quarter in. And if consensus is 245, well, that might that means there could be $10, $15 of upside for just this year on earnings alone. On risk premia, which is, you know, what you should put as a PE multiple. Well, if the Fed starts cutting and the economy's resilient, uh, the PE is only 15 times X fang. And the third is really flows. Uh, there's still six trillion of cash on the sidelines. Margin debt is barely budged. It's below where it was in October 2023, which was just a few months ago. So I, I don't think investors are necessarily that risk on. I mean, I know the market is technically overbought, but Mark Newton, our head of technical strategy, says you don't really want to be, you know, using an overbought as a, as actually a sell signal because strong markets stay strong. Tom, you mentioned the idea that leverage isn't what it used to be at, at points in the past. Does that t take a massive market decline off the table? And if we did get a decline, how big in your mind could it be? Uh, Dom, uh, for now, I think it does mitigate downside because it, when leverage is low, like margin debt for the, at the NYSE, it means investors aren't long yet the backdrop is improving, so that, that means they have to use these pullbacks as chances to get long. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we, we expect an air pocket in the first half, um, something like 7% or more. It's just that there's so many top callers now that I think that's why there's still gas in the tank on this rally. All right, and last question. We have a few moments. The favorite part of the market for you, given the current valuation? Uh, well, there's there's... there's what I think are five things that are working this year, I don't really want to talk about all five, but to me, uh, you know, we know that technology and FANG, including NVIDIA, are working because of AI. And I think that's also pulling up, you know, the miners and Bitcoin because they, they are kind of correlated trades. The second thing that seems to be working are things that are related around uh, Ozempic and, and reducing weight loss because of the productivity benefit to workers. But to me, the third, maybe most interesting, is small caps. You know, we think there's 50 percent upside this year. They're trading at 44 percent of the price to book of large caps. So I, I do think that's really one of the sleeper stories this year.